if you nurture a culture in your church or your Christian institution that is good, it will produce good policies, it will produce good programs, it will pr- produce good income, it will produce good relations. All these things can happen if we allow the power of the Spirit to shape the way we live. When someone is moving on and they're looking for this Tove culture, which by the way, for everyone who's who's listening and watching, I don't I don't think I've said that is Hebrew for good. <laughs> so you now you know yeah. if you're like, what was that? And maybe you've Googled yeah. it already. But yeah, it's Hebrew for good. What are some characteristics of a Tove culture? What are some things that someone would be looking for? Um, Naomi, when when Laura and I wrote this book. Uh, we realized that culture was a big feature in all this. And we um, we began to map marks of toxicity and flip marks of toxicity, like narcissism or what we call power through fear or uh, institution creep or uh, celebrity culture, anything like this, okay? Mm-hmm. So... Uh, we looked at these toxicities, and they were pretty clear uh, when we began to look at what different churches have as a culture, and we flipped it. So these aren't simply marks of Tove. These are the alternatives to toxicity. Marks of Tove, I think, could be, let's just say, love. That's that's the essence of Tove, is, is, is love. Or you could look at the fruit of the Spirit. Some people would look at the uh, at the Ten Commandments, or you could look at the major themes of the prophets, or you could look at Jesus's Beatitudes. I think that there's different ways of characterizing what Tov is. But what we found um, as the flip side of toxicity was uh, empathy. A Tov mm-hmm. culture is empathic. And narcissists, have no empathy. This is the nature of their brain, okay? And it feeds on itself and makes itself worse in these people. They get worse in their toxicities because they get stimulated by acting that way, okay? The second one is grace. Grace is a big idea, but we need to be people with grace toward other people so that toxicities don't form. Now, this doesn't mean that when we encounter a toxic leader and he partially confesses to a little bit of what he or she has done, that we immediately say, you're forgiven, now we're back, and we're going to start all over again. It, that's not what we're talking about with grace. Grace is, is going to become a culture that really makes an impact. A third thing we noticed is um, Tove cultures put people first rather than institutions, policies, and programs, is that, um, and I often tell it this way, um, I learned when I was a young professor, I was on an elevator with another professor at an academic meeting, and we were the only two in the elevator, and uh, I said to him, what do you teach? Because, you know, he had his name tag and didn't say what he taught, and he said something to me that, that stunned me at the moment and has had a big impact. He said, I teach students. How about you? Well, there's a big difference between Mm -hmm. I teach Bible and he teaches students. And I think that is the distinction between an institution creep that takes over and doesn't care about people or their stories and a Tove culture, the character that, that works on people. or or works with people. Then another characteristic, so empathy, grace, putting people first, is to tell the truth. Um, Toxic church cultures are fabulous spinners. They can tell a story that makes sense of everything that happens, and then you realize later that's not what happened. How many leaders get rid of, let's say, toxic leaders, getting rid of employees, and are willing to say from the platform in church, the Lord has called them to another place. That is spinning 
a narrative that sounds oh so spiritual, but it is, I would say, a lie. It is not telling the truth. There's a better way of doing this. A fifth mm -hmm. is, is justice. A Tove culture is just. Um, it doesn't care about loyalty as much as it cares about justice. And we found, we found that toxic cultures, when you when you start looking at where they are demanding loyalty, is precisely at the moment when someone has to face about doing the right thing at the right time, and they're it's they're forced into a into a uh, a choice you know there's a there's a, a v in the road you either tell the truth and lose your job or you are loyal to the leader and you keep your job over and over we found the alternative to a loyalty culture is justice a sixth is service instead of a celebrity culture where people are trying to become stars and leaders you know they want to be at the front of the pack. Um, the Tove culture emphasizes service, which is exactly the way Jesus framed his own his own life. As I came to give my life for others, mm -hmm. not to be served, but to serve. And then our last one, this is sort of a pet peeve of mine, is the development of leadership cultures in churches. Led pastors away from people into becoming entrepreneurs rather than uh, leading pastors and leaders in churches to become more like Christ, Christ-likeness. So that was the seventh. Now, those are the flip side of toxic marks rather than, you know, if I were to, if I were to be asked, what are the marks of a Tove culture? I would use these, mm -hmm. but I would I would probably frame them through the fruit of the spirit, or through the major teachings of Jesus, like love, or through um, the visions of the prophets. But these these are definitely marks of a Tove culture. Well, and that actually was my last question that I had for you is as succinctly as you can, I suppose, because being a, a official New Testament gentleman over there, I'm sure you have a lot that you could say here, but what does Jesus teach us about culture? And I know he teaches us a lot about culture, but again, the word isn't directly used, right? Yeah, so I don't yeah. know that people have really thought about it in that way yeah. before. Uh, ethos would be the Greek word, I suppose. Uh, and that would only be an approximate Okay, here, here's a famous line by Jesus. And this is a little bit more individualistic, but I think it's corporate as well. It includes people. Good trees produce good fruit. Mm -hmm. Bad trees produce bad fruit. The tree is a culture. If you nurture a culture in your life individually, you will produce good fruit. If you nurture a culture in your church or your Christian institution uh, that is good, it will produce good policies, it will produce good programs, it will pr produce good income, it will produce good relations. All these things can happen if we allow, let's say, the highest virtues of the Christian faith and the power of grace and the power of the Spirit the power of following Christ to shape the way we live, it can become a culture of Tove and constrain us to live in that way. You know, we use, my daughter loved to find stories. And I told her, I said, well, you know, we need good stories, not just, it's easy to find bad stories right now in the church. Okay. We need to find good stories. And she'd find them. I said, Laura, I don't know this person. Uh, and I said, I finally came to the conclusion, we have to come to stories of people who are dead, whose stories are clear and their stories are unimpeachable. One of the stories in our book we thought was a fantastic story, I discovered from someone else, was actually a, a toxic person who did something good and got magnified for it. 
Okay. Uh-huh. So you think, oh, that's too bad that we have that in the book. Uh, no, most people don't know who it is, so it doesn't matter. But so we landed on Mr. Rogers. And here's why. You know, I, my kids watched him when they were young and we watched him. But Chris, my wife, she's the psychologist in the house. She she loved to watch Mr. Rogers with the kids. And so she sort of watched him and knew him. And Mr. Rogers creates a radio program with a lot of employees. And somebody in New York, I believe, wanted to write a magazine article. And this author, this editor, this this writer was known for hatchet jobs to destroy people who everybody thought was a cool person. He always found the dirt and the junk. Okay. Okay. So he studies Mr. Rogers. And when he's done, and, and Mr. Rogers gave him total access. When he's done, he comes to the conclusion, the Mr. Rogers that you see on TV is the Mr. Rogers all the time. Well, so I read, I've read a couple books about Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers. And one of the most alarming things, I mean, wonderful things, is that people said this about him. He was the most Christ-like person I've ever met in my life. And one person after another said, the Mr. Rogers that you see with the kids on TV, that's Mr. Rogers all the time. They never saw him get really mad or anything like this. And the culture of his business, whatever you want to call it, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, was just like that. Is all the policies seem to have created a Tove culture. That, that constrained people to behave in really kind and good ways. That's what we're talking. That's what we. That's what we're talking about uh, with culture and uh, its power to shape us. 